Hi everyone, I hope you're sitting comfortably like I am. Um, so there's lots and lots of things to go through. So as Hayley says, by all means, just plough some questions my way. Um, but I've got this as kind of sections and a very log I'm quite a logical um, and process sort of driven person. So I I've put it into chunks of logical steps through Google Ads. So let's, let's dive on in. So what we want to do with Google Ads, obviously the climate is, is very, very different at the moment. Many of your clinics will be closed for obvious reasons. Um, but that is not to say that your ideal prospect isn't going to be sitting there thinking about having these procedures done, getting some treatments done. They're going to be desperate for some TLC when we come out the other side. And as I say, the curtain is opened. So um, a lot of our clinics are still advertising, but having a, a lower ad spend at the moment so that it can still bring through a trickle feed through of leads and inquiries that you can then book through, um, you know, you can book in advance for months down the line. So the goal with Google Ads is that we want to help grow clinics. We want to get you to the top of Google. So when people are searching for the treatments that you offer, that your, um, your clinic is up there with the best of them to be able to give them an option. Because if you're not up there, it doesn't, all they can do is go to competitors. So the whole point of this, like Hayley said, is that it's all about return on investment. We want to be investing in Google Ads to be at the top of Google when people are searching, giving your ideal prospect the opportunity to work with you because you, I'm sure you've got an amazing clinic. You do a great job with your customers. However, if we're not kind of shouting it from the rooftops, telling everybody that you're there, they just simply won't know. So Google Ads helps you to do that. So the whole point is that we want to help get your, your diary booked full. So I'm kind of full of stories. So I just wanted to tell you a little story to begin with. It's to help me learn to the car. Um, I had um, to learn how to drive a car and it was a complete and utter nightmare. I just couldn't do it. I failed. I failed numerous times. I failed four times and then on my fifth time I eventually passed. And it's because I couldn't dedicate the time to understand how to drive this blessed thing. I was at university, I was doing things, I didn't have a car to practice in, I just didn't have the right tools for the job. So my dad said, right, I'm going to get you to teach you this properly, because I've been having lessons but couldn't dedicate the, the time properly. Um, so he said, right, I'm going to take you up Oxford Street, we're going to go into the depths of learning how to drive a car. And, um, and then somehow I ended up passing and thankfully rose open for me to be able to then get my, my um, you know, green L plates to go and properly learn how to drive a car. Now, I tell you this story because Google Ads is much the same. It's this big piece that can open your world and if it's done correctly, it can be a great vehicle for, vehicle for driving your input. However, that said, this is what we think about today. What we today is it in which is great however it's not necessarily a scalable and controllable way to be able to grow your clinic so I'm pointing at my screen you can't see my fingers. on the left we can wear it easy I mean that literally Sorry yeah. to interrupt you, but I think we're having a bit of sound trouble. Are you? Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, like, me... it's a very odd thing because it's not like your internet is dropping. It's like um, you do get going quite robotic. Oh, let me try. Let me try headset. Let me see if that kick in. Is that better? We'll we'll try it and see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. It could it could be an internet connectivity thing, but. When we've had internet problems on webinars before, usually the picture faults and the audio is okay. So it, it just seems a bit odd that the audio is going and the picture is okay. Oh, okay. So how how do I how do I sound now while I'm talking? Yeah, no no crackle there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've got a headset in now, so maybe that's better. Um, but let's try that and see see how we go. Yeah. Okay. I'll yeah. let you I'll let you know if it crackles again. Yes. Do okay. apologies about that. It's so <laughs> frustrating. That's all right. Just maybe go back to the. Um, the start of this slide perhaps yeah 
Okay, so um, what I was saying there was that I was able to pass my test and then the, I had the open road ahead of me. I had this vehicle that can take me places and Google Ads is a vehicle much like a car in that it can help you drive your business forward by getting you more sales leads and inquiries. But where we are today, and I'm, like I say, I'm, I'm pointing at my screen, but you can't see my finger. Over to the left there is where we are today. And I don't mean that literally. That was before this, this whole situation kicked off. But where we are today is such that you're possibly getting sales through from recommendations, from referrals, some of the natural things that you're doing. However, um, what we want to be able to do is to get to the other side, which is, um, which is where we have this scalable and repeatable way of getting in customers into the clinic. But the bit that's the tricky bit is the bit that's getting from where we are today to where we need to get to that's the hard bit just a sound check is everything okay now yeah brilliant okay so this is a journey um, and what google ads is all about is about it's a learning machine um, i don't know if you do facebook ads or any of the other sort of platforms but it's very similar in that it learns about data it learns how people are using the advertising what people click on what people don't click on and, and so we need to learn. We need to learn a bit about this. We need to observe and understand, again, what people are clicking on, what they're not clicking on, what keywords are working, all of the sort of technical stuff in the background, and then make the appropriate changes to these advertising platforms um, to be able to then give us this repeatable fashion and uh, repeatable sales leads and buys. So the landscape is always changing. God love Google, but they do like to change things on a very regular basis, hence keeping us on our toes and keeping our business very, very busy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through this. However, funnily enough, this is what I get quite a lot. I get people ringing me up saying, hold on, Google Ads doesn't work. I've tried it for my clinic. I've tried it for my business. It doesn't work. But like I said earlier, really, it is a platform. It is a tool. And I actually blame an 80s band, the 80s band being Bananarama. Their famous line, it ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it that gets results. So again, Google Ads is much the same. It's a platform where we're using it to be able to say, hey, I want to be able to spend some money on these keywords, get us to the top of Google when people are looking and, and take people to our website to get them to call us up. It's no more difficult than that. But it's the way that it is done, the strategy and all those moving parts behind it that makes it fail or succeed so much like you know heat you can put a, um, a piece of, bit of ice on there and it will turn from uh, a block of ice to water sounds crazy but it's it is just a tool and what we want to be able to do is use it as a repeatable tool to get in those sales leads and inquiries so it's a little bit like a slot machine we want to be putting pounds in at the top and multiple of those comes down at the bottom and the multiples are how exciting it can get. So the great thing about Google Ads is that it's measurable. So we can say, okay, I've spent a thousand pounds, I've spent 500 pounds, and I have seen I've had 10 inquiries, 20 inquiries. We can see everything. It's not like um, traditional marketing, sort of older marketing uh, activities, like for example, a leaflet drop, um, where you could do a leaflet drop and, and it might land on the doorstep of somebody that desperately wants some lip filling or it might sit on the doormat of a thousand people that have no interest in that whatsoever. So it's, it's measurable. You can see exactly what is working. You can control it. So you can see, you control what is in your advert and what isn't. And it's scalable to a certain extent. You're, you're, um, you can scale how much you want to spend. However, you are restricted because if you're doing it right, you don't want your ads going all across the UK. You want them in the local area to local people around your clinic. So we want to get to the stage where Google Ads is actually working and it's filling your diary and you're growing your clinic. So that is the whole goal. So what I want to do is just give you a few examples so we can kind of really bring this to life. Now, um, uh, this is a clinic that we work with down in Swindon, the Smiles Clinic. He managed this himself internally. His Google Ads had been doing it for, for many months or years before that. He'd been spending about £5,000 a month on ad spend. I thought, gosh, that's a quite a lot. You don't actually, if we're doing this right, we don't actually need to be spending this much uh, for, a local, um, for a local clinic. So he was getting frustrated because he couldn't dedicate the time to it because obviously he was on the tools as well and he couldn't really increase the return. So we had a chat 
I, I looked in the account and I reviewed it and there was there was various things that were um, definitely needing improving and the, the numbers sort of spoke for themselves so like, like he says within within some weeks we'd massively increased the inquiries and saved him 30 grand in the first year so he was um, a happy bunny it's funny I say that because I did a presentation at the Miami cosmetics conference oh gosh yeah like six weeks ago and I, I referred to this and said about happy bunny and they're like what on earth are you talking about it didn't translate so well but what happened was he'd yeah he'd got more more um, inquiries and his spend had gone down and it's because of a number of different things that were um, were incorrect within the within the ad campaign so Again, it's doing it right that makes the difference. I just wanted to share that little story. And a little bit about us. I mean, Haley's very kindly give us a lovely introduction, but this is my team here. Um, YBA is, is the agency name. We're a premier partnership with Google and we, we manage over two million pounds of ad spend for our, for our clients. So just a little bit of background, just to give you a little bit about my story, because I'm a business owner, much like you guys are. Um, I worked at uh, T-Mobile. I was the UK and European PR manager. And I, I felt, you know, I wasn't making a huge difference. I was great at my job, but I, um, I, I felt that I couldn't control things and wanted to have better impact in, in sort of life in general. So I thought, right, this is time for a change. My brother had a little home computer repairs business. And, um, and I thought, right, I'm going to join his business. And I'm going to help grow it so literally on the back of a fag packet I tried out Google Ads I did a very basic course and went back like a woman possessed to my desk and tried out these keywords tried out these ads and the phone just didn't stop ringing it was crazy it went really really well and and then I thought, right, OK, well, we're on to a winner here. Um, in the first three months, we had over 100 new customers. And now the company's got over 4000 customers. And that's in large part due to the Google ads and the work that we did there. So from there, then businesses were coming to me to say, look, you know, I've tried it and I can't get it to work. Would you have a look at it? So I then started a business helping other businesses and, and we've grown from there. So we've won numerous awards and um, and, and very proud with with that so that's just a little bit of background on me and the team so today what I'm going to share with you is five of the main top tips for campaign success and like I say it's very kind of systematic I'm quite a systematic person with some practical and actionable steps whether you decide that Google Ads is right for you or not I guarantee you will still find tips that will be very useful for your business come what may so what is Google Ads um, people refer to it, I've heard of it as paperclip. Now it is not a paperclip, it is a pay per click module. It's a pay per click platform. So it stands for PPC, not paper clip. So what happens is when you, um, you ha how it works, you would say to Google, right, for this particular word, I want our, our advert to come up at the top. So I've just given this example here, lip fillers. And you can see there, there's four adverts at the top. Those companies are paying when somebody clicks on the ad. When they click on the ad, they pay a certain amount to Google. And when the person clicks on the ad, obviously they go to the company's website. Ideally, it needs to be the, the page on their website that is talking about that particular treatment or product so um, so that's where we can make it very controllable now underneath these ads you've got the four ads at the top you've then got a map now this is called Google my business and I would recommend every clinic on this call registers their business it's a free free software um, you go to Google 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 my business and you put in your details and you'll be able to register your own clinic in there so please 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 all do that because it is free and it will make sure that you're in that map there um, I can't scroll further down, but underneath the map, you then have um, the like the natural organic listings of the websites from Google. Now, th that is where Google scrolls through all of the millions of websites across Google's platform and looks to see which is relevant for that term lip fillers. So um, that is what is other known as uh, SEO, search engine optimization. So I'm sure many of you know this. If not, hopefully that's um, that's clarified what that is. So what is the difference between Google Ads? Do I do Google Ads or do I uh, do Facebook Ads? So just a quick one on that. I'm not a Facebook Ads expert. Um, we are just purely Google Ads, but just to kind of help you understand. So the difference between Google and Facebook, Facebook you advertise to targeting people with likes, with interests, with um, demographic targeting, etc., in the hope that they may be the right kind of prospect for you. The difference between that and Google is Google, again, 
going to uh, people are going to Google literally with their hand in their back pocket against their credit card going right I want to go to Google to find a company that can supply me with X you know lip filler treatment as a prime example so that's the main difference so one is around buyer intent so I intend to go to Google to look for exactly what you offer Facebook is I'm going to advertise to people who I think are possibly in the market for it and build up a reputation that way so that's the main difference so I'm take a quick swig so this is where Google was five years ago it would be very simple to um, to select some keywords to advertise on to put up some ads and and you'd make a you know a successful outcome usually out of luck rather than judgment um, however now it's a different ball game it is like flying a Boeing 747 or some other very complicated plane where there's all these different things that you can turn and up and down and um, you know you've got the, the, the rudder you've got all sorts of different things so there's loads and things going on this is what a Google adverts um, a platform is like at the moment it's highly highly complicated and things are changing all the time so it's not that easy so before we get into anything to do with google ads and frankly anything to do with marketing this is a really really important point for all of you please please know your numbers look at things before you make anything um sort of you know do the calculations around it so you know before we go on a holiday we don't just rock up at the airport and go okay we're going to go to this destination we think about it we plan it we look at the hotel that we're going to go to we think about the transport google ads and any other marketing is no different we don't want to just go into it and go oh yeah we're just going to do a leaflet drop not sure what's going to happen but let's hope it goes well what we need to know is how much do we want to gain from this and is it working or not Without the numbers, we don't know if we're winning or losing. So a rough clinic example. So let's say that the average spend um, of, of a client with, um, with year, within year one, let's say they have two sessions at lip fillers, let's say this is 600 pounds. So the revenue into the clinic is 600 pounds. Let's estimate, and every clinic will be different, but es let's estimate the gross profit is say 500, uh, sorry, five, uh, 50%, so 300 pounds. Let's say, again, as a, as a clinic, you're prepared to spend £150 to gain that customer, to gain that sale. Now, you know, the more you're prepared to pay, the more you can, um, the more volume of leads you're probably going to get. But let's say you're prepared to pay £150 to get that exchange of £300. Then another really important number to know is how many we convert from lead to sale. So let's say we get four people to ring you with inquiries of lip fillers and of those four inquiries, you're able to secure one sale. It might be that you're able to secure two or three. I don't know. Every clinic is different, but I'm making some assumptions here. So looking at those maths and working backwards, your goal cost per lead is £37.50. So therefore, we know that if we do Google Ads and we spend £500 or however much you're spending, you can then do the maths to say, OK, yes, it's working. Brilliant. Or, oh, my gosh, we're way off the mark here. But at least, you know, factually, it's all about the return on investment. If it's not working, you shouldn't be doing it. Or we should be asking questions as to why it's not working. So hopefully that makes some sense. But again, it's not just on Google Ads. This is any marketing you're doing. Think about how much you want to gain from it um, to make sure that it is commercially viable for you or not. The other thing that's really important to think about is that we need to think about the lifetime value of a customer. So don't necessarily think that you're going to make a profit on the first customer that comes through. We need to be thinking, OK, we're going to gain this customer and we know we're going to do a great job. Look after them. We're going to be repeat business with them for many months and years to come. So Google Ads, let's go back into this. So Google Ads is a very kind of systematic approach. So we've got keywords and, um, and adverts. That's the first thing that needs to happen. Um, and targeting and ads and offers. That's kind of the next stage. Landing page of the page that we're taking people to on your website and then measuring and improving it. And then that is a systematic thing that just keeps on going. Underlying from all of this is the foundations, which is conversion tracking. So I'll, I'll go through that in a moment, but just wanted to show you that this is kind of the process of how you create and manage a Google Ads campaign. So firstly, conversion tracking. This is just basically the fancy word for tracking the action that you want somebody to take on your, um, on your Google Ads campaigns. 
So we need to know that what measure, what gets measured gets managed so we can see what is happening and make the right changes within your Google Ads account to get you the right kind of outcomes. And I'll explain that a little bit better here. So with the conversion tracking, once we've got that set up, we can then say, okay, we can get more qualified traffic because we can get more of what's working. Therefore, we can get more conversion so we can get more sales inquiries and, and therefore get more sort of more outcomes and more turnover. So that's why conversion tracking is absolutely vital. If you haven't got conversion tracking set up on your account, please stop. Please understand how to get that set up and, um, and make sure that that is done. So in terms of conversion tracking, the sorts of things that you would want to, to track is an inbound phone call. So somebody that just rings up and says, you know, hey, I, I'm looking to book an appointment with you. Can you tell me more about your treatments? So a phone call is a very, very important conversion to track. The other one is if you have live chat on your website, so that as, a, as an action needs to be tracked. And lastly is around the uh, sort of booking form or contact us form, a physical form that somebody needs to fill in on your website. So those are the three key things that need to be tracked on your website. Don't worry about how much time is spent on your website or if you've got a, a brochure to download or something like that. Um, they're not active steps. For us, it's about that IR ROI. It's about the active sales steps that somebody takes. So to give you an example here, um, this is a client that we work with and we, we track their phone calls. So when somebody phones that telephone number up, we track that as a conversion in the ads account. So therefore we can go into the ads account and say, okay, we've spent 50 pounds on this particular um, keyword. It's made the phone ring on this one, whereas this keyword hasn't. So we're going to turn that down. We're going to turn that off. So just to explain how that works, because th you're probably thinking, well, how, how on earth do you physically track somebody phoning you up from the website? So how this works is a little bit of technical code sits on your website, and that code says when somebody comes from a, clicks from a Google ad onto the website, the code then changes to a different telephone number that we've purchased that would be a local regional telephone number. Then when somebody rings that telephone number, it triggers back into Google Ads and we can see it that way. It's a little bit complicated, but that's hopefully a simple way to explain how it works. So that's the phone call. And the other thing is an example here where somebody will have filled out the form here and clicked on, on send form. So once they click on send form, they then hit a thank you page and that technical code sits on the thank you page to trigger as a conversion. Um, if you want to go up a gear, this is that there's something else that you can do for helping to increase inquiries, especially within um, the cosmetics clinic industry. Some people may be at work and don't really want to make these sort of personal phone calls. So what you can do is you can have something called response IQ, which is a little bit of code that sits on your website and it sits as a, um, a plugin. So it will pop up and say, pop, pop in your number here and we will call you back at whatever time they can, they can indicate what time they want the phone call to happen. So then what happens is let's say it's at three o'clock. They want a phone call back. What happens is the code goes through to your team and it triggers an outbound phone call from your, or, um, from your office to the um, to this prospect so they're expecting your phone call at three o'clock now that's this is kind of an, an advanced technique but um, but it's, it's a great technique to test out so act now these are a couple of things that you can do work out your average order value look at what your lead to sale is how many leads do you need to create that sale and therefore what do you think your goal cost per lead is there is no right or wrong about the goal cost per lead it's an individual thing to each clinic um, the more you're prepared to spend to gain that customer um, the more repeatable you'll get those through and set up accurate conversion tracking if you are doing google ads at the moment so let's go into the first section here, keywords and targeting. So it all starts with a keyword. This is where, um, this is the, the crux of it. We need to be bidding on the right kind of keywords so that we are activating the right kind of people to see your ads. So we don't want to be at, um, advertising on the wrong kind of keywords. And, and what I mean by that is, um, with the treatments, we want to make sure that it's very buyer intent. So for example, it could be that we're looking to advertise to people that are looking for lip fillers. I live in Harpenden, lip fillers Harpenden. So we want to bid on that kind of keyword, not a generic keyword like um, how much 
our lip fillers because that's that's fine but they're slightly further down that buying process we need to make sure that they are hot to trot they're looking for a clinic in their area um you can bid on those kind of more generic researching type keywords however the strategy is different we would then um you know you, you end up paying slightly different ultimately for a, a cost per lead on that one so take your head out of your own business, your own clinic, think about your ideal prospect. And that photo there hopefully resonates with you in that we're trying to think about that person that sat in front of their computer thinking, gosh, I'd really want to have some laser hair removal done. Um, so they're probably gonna write laser hair removal Harpenden, for example. So let's think about the ideal customer. Don't think about the type of treatment that you've got um, and the ins and outs of your treatment. So get a cup of tea, just pretend you're that ideal prospect. Think about the buyer intent, and uh, another example there is about the, um, the service or the treatment and the location in which you're, you're serving. So here's uh, an example of a dental clinic that we work with. And so okay, similar to Smiles, they were, well, they were actually working with a different agency and they were frustrated by the lack of inquiries that they were getting through. And it transpired that the type of keywords that they were bidding on weren't um, they were more sort of researching keywords. There was a lot of wastage within the account. So we were able to strip a lot of that back and be able to um, create them a far better outcome based on having better keywords. Um, and similarly with Linton, you know, we've, we've made some changes to the keyword selection there and the cost has come down dramatically. The volume of conversions compared to the previous six months um, has increased massively and the cost per conversion has gone down. So the outcome is massive by making just, just these particular types of changes. So hopefully that kind of brings to life some examples of, um, of how impactful it can be by having the right kind of keywords. Now, if you're looking for keywords, there's some tools that you can use, which is Keyword Planner Tool. It's a free tool, but you need to do it within your Google Ads account. So you need to get that set up anyway. But what, what you can do is you can use that to find out how many people roughly are searching in your area. So I use this example here of laser hair removal in Leeds. So I've used the keywords laser hair removal, laser hair removal near me, et cetera it's done it in dollar sign but but it's estimating that around leads you, you could spend a, around about 850 pounds and according to google which it doesn't know how well your landing page is going to convert it's saying that you could probably get about 13 leads um, with a cost per acquisition of 64 dollars so these numbers aren't exact but it's it can be used to find out roughly how many people are searching it can be quite useful if you're looking to consider um, and how much you might need to spend in your local area it will also give you an indication of of these searches how many people are looking on mobile which as we know mobile is massive um especially within this particular industry where people are looking sort of aspirational they might be on the train you know looking um on their mobile and desktop is just a quarter of tablet isn't a huge amount so make sure please make sure that your website is mobile optimized it's fast on mobile it's responsive it's really really important regardless again if you're doing google ads or not make sure that your your mobile website is working well just a little tip here on geographical targeting <clears throat> This is again sort of an advanced thing, but if you're doing Google ads, make sure in the geographical targeting that you are targeting your local area and don't go with one of Google's recommended, it's very, very sneaky, one of recommended targeting uh, sections there, I've put an arrow here. It recommends that you target people who are in or are interested in your location. We don't want to do that. We wanna make sure that we are only targeting people in your area um, because I'll show you an example here. If you're targeting along Google's recommendations that are people are who are interested in, you may be targeting people across the world who are interested in your, um, in your you know, advertising your treatments, but they, they will not be using your treatments anytime soon. It's just a little uh, quick tip there. So act now, check the keywords that you're advertising, have a look at how good your website is on mobile. And I think further down this presentation, there's a website that we can check on Google. So it will actually tell you how responsive your particular website is on mobile and, um, and check out the targeting on Google. So before I go into the next section on ads and offers, I know I've been doing lots of talking there. So do you want to open the floor for any, any quick questions or? Um, any queries anyone's got? Oh, you're muted, Hayley. Sorry. 
Yeah, no, quest no questions at the moment, all, all makes sense, yeah. All, okay. All very logical. Good, I will plough on. Okay, so with regards to ads, this is the next step. So we've selected the keywords. Well, firstly, we've got the conversion tracking set up. We're then selecting the right kind of keywords. We're now looking at the ads. Now, the whole point here is that we want to gain eyeballs to your ad as opposed to anybody else's. We need to make sure that it's really, really relevant to whatever somebody has typed in. We want to make sure that, for example, if somebody's typed in lip fillers, we need to make sure that the headline has lip fillers in it and it's relating to, to exactly what somebody's typed in. We need to have a good call to action. So that is book now, call today, you know, just spurring in some inspiration to get them to actually click on you. Now, also, we need to make sure that your ad is um, is including some USP, some unique selling points that you do. You know, why is it that somebody should engage with your clinic as opposed to anybody else's in the town? And things like family run, that sort of stuff, that's not unique. We need to be showing that um, you're different. Is it that you've perhaps got easy parking? Do you, I don't know, um, offer a free, free such and such to go along with um, the treatment? So what is it that you're doing differently? And what you can do is do a search for the treatment in your local area and, and see what the advertisers are saying. And what we do for our clients is we do a competitor gap analysis. So we'll do a search, have a look at those four top adverts and say, OK, they're saying that they're saying that. Let's make a gap and make sure that yours has all the best bits and identifies as yours as the most eye catching that is possible um, at the top four. So those are the key things to think about. So just an example of the um, competitor gap analysis, um, doing a, a, a treatment for hyperhidrosis. So uh, that's obviously laser treatment to remove um, sweat issues. So here, what I've done is identified in green boxes, the good things that people are saying in their ads, the red bits, not so much. So for example, modern techniques. Well, hey, I, I should hope they are modern techniques. If you're gonna be doing these on me, I wanna make sure that they're really, really good. Um, and they've referred there in the next red one, their breathing problem, asthma, allergies, sleep apnea. Well, hyperhidrosis is not very relevant to any of those points. So it just uh, loses impact there. And at the bottom, 100% guaranteed to stop your, uh, and then on the next line, hyperhidrosis. So there's some things that, that we should improve. The green bits, make sure that you've got your local telephone number in there, make sure you've got a call to action. So book your free consultation today, same day appointments. Um, reviews there you've got the, the orange stars if you've got a, a link to your google reviews brilliant because that is very eye-catching at the bottom one there you've got northampton slash hyperhidrosis so again making the url of the of the advert which again you can control it doesn't need to be a proper url that is live you you can you can just put this in there um you know all these sorts of things will make sure that your ad is more eye-catching than than anybody else's so it's um it's quite important to get those things on there an example here, case study of a clinic that we work with, Covent Garden Aesthetics Clinic. So uh, they were struggling with some of the results that they'd got through from an agency. And one of the key things that we found there, the improvements there were made was on the ad copy. So we top left there is the ad copy that he had running originally. And then we widened it up by taking more of the space from Google, made the advert bigger. We, we changed up some of the ad copy. And what that did was it doubled the click through rate and therefore doubled his return. So in terms of conversions, he got 50% more conversions, the cost per lead came down and the, um, uh, where are we there? That's the conversion rate went up by 31%. So massive impact by making changes to the actual ads that were were showing. So also just to let you know, there's there's as we said, Google is always changing. There's more and more things that are available to us, which is fantastic. It's doing a lot with regards to machine learning. So it's understanding what people are clicking on, what they're not clicking on, and it's allowing us to use that. Um, that's what I call Google juice to be able to get more outcomes for our, um, for our clinics. So there's things like expanded text ads, which is the ones where you can make your ad bigger than previously. There's dynamic search ads. So, um, so it will dynamically change the ad based on a number of different assets that you can list about your clinic. There's responsive ads, there's responsive display ads. I won't go into these too much, but, um, but there's lots of advances, lots of improvements to get you a far better outcome from google 
This gives you an example of the, um, the, the dynamic search ads. So, um, so you can, what you can do is you can list all of the different key points about the clinic and be able to use those. What Google does is it then mixes and matches them to find the best performing um, points and grows those and builds upon those. So the better you do it, it's kind of a snowball effect. The better you are, the better outcomes you will continue to get. So that was just to give you a little bit of an insight into the, the, the AI and the learning from Google to, to create the better advances and better outcomes for you. So the next section is on landing pages. So was there um, any questions there on the ads? Yes, so um, how often or how frequently should you analyse your Google Ads account and update the adverts? Okay, it is, um, it's very statistical, so it needs to be either the number of clicks, so uh, just to give rough figures, you might want to have, say, 100 clicks, 100 amounts of data onto one ad versus the other one, but it's statistically significant data. Now, every clinic will be different, but it's the right amount of data for your business, so having five clicks to one and 10 clicks to the other, well, that's not statistically significant, so if you want a rough earmark, I would say around 100 clicks to an ad or a percentage um, as well. So um, it's difficult to answer that, but what is what whatever is statistically significant to show you that there's a trend that is better than the other um, to then say, hey, we've got a we've got a winner here. Let's leave that one and we'll take out the old ad and introduce a new challenger ad mm -hmm. so that you can what we, what we call a B split test the two adverts and keep the winning one and then ditch the other one and, and make a change. Great. Yeah. OK. So landing pages. So we've talked about the conversion tracking, the keywords, the ads. And now what we're doing is talking about the page at which we're taking people to on your website. So a few examples just wanted to run through. So don't take them to a page that's got lots of information about what it is that you do. They are already pre-sold. If we're bidding on the right kind of keywords, we're taking them to a page of which people are ready to find out that you're the right clinic for them, not that you're the right treatment. So this example here, laser hair removal, you know, no shaving or waxing, permanent hair removal, three key bullet points as to why this particular um, offering is better. So best laser hair removal technology, safe and effective treatment state the art calling system um, and then a clear call to action in this particular one this there's quite a lot of information here um, I don't think that that's necessary it should be you know name email address and, and phone number and you can even um, uh, you know cut that down quite a lot as well but just keep the barrier to entry low so that we can get as many inquiries through as possible um, so here's a good checklist to make sure that you're getting the right kind of copy and the right kind of assets onto your landing page. Firstly, a headline. So we want to make sure that the headline resonates with what it is that we are advertising. So if we're talking about laser hair removal, don't get clever, just put laser hair removal leads, for example, as the headline. Then when they come to this page, they'll think, duh, I'm in the right place, this is right. We just have to think really, really simply, it's not trying to be clever. Then what we need to do is uh, on the left hand side, a hero shot or, or a video, but essentially it's showing to them in a, in a pictorial form that they're in the right place. So it could be a, a, a video that is kind of a quick walkthrough on your type of treatment or it could be a picture, but they instantly resonate with it and go, yeah, I'm in the right place. Then you need three key bullet points as to why you're better or different or more compelling than anybody else. So again, don't tell them about the treatments identify why it is that you are better than any of the other clinics locally. Um, think what is in it for me? What, what is it that's going to engage them to, to take action? Call to action. Um, so we want to make sure that we've got uh, either a um, you know book a consultation, click here for a quick chat with, with Anna in the office or in the clinic, sorry, something like that, but a clear call to action to take them along the path of, of sale social proof so if you can have some testimonials some written testimonials and video testimonials perhaps a before and after photo something like that is great so a headline a picture what's in it for me you know three key bullet points as to why you're different have a strong call to action and the social proof of your um uh, from from your clients so here's an example of Azure, that dental clinic. So, um, so the, the headline is very clear that they're in the wrong, in the right place. So it's around gentle, fast, um, 
sorry, pain-free dentist in Form B, the key bullet points as to why you know you should use this particular clinic, and book a consultation or the telephone number is there. I, I'm, I'll share your I'll share with you all my slides towards the end, so um, so you can by all means use this information. And here's an example of the Covent Garden Aesthetics Clinic. This was a treatment on laser um, teeth whitening. Very clear, we're in the right place. There's a picture that shows that we're in the right place. The call to action, the offer is there. It's very simple, very clear, and, um, and, and resonates with the right people. Now, <laughs> this is something I came across. And what it does is there's a guy in the States that will do a review of your website, your landing page, after having a few alcoholic beverages. Now, I'm not saying if, if this is um, uh, ethically correct. However, it's really important. It, it just goes to show that it's important to make sure that your website, your landing page is really, really simple. And we know once we've had a beverage or two that we need things to be simple because anything difficult is just not worth it. So it's just a bit of a comical thing to, to, to show you that um, keep it really, really simple. Uh, I was at a conference, uh, the um, a conference that I was speaking at a few weeks back and I showed an example of my daughter I screen grabbed her looking at some websites and she's she's 11 and it was really interesting how she went through these pages and she went mommy I have no idea what this website's about and so if you have a young child then by all means get them to have a look at your website and say look what is it that you want to, what is it that I'm asking you to do on the website and if they have to scroll around and look around well it's it's not going to pass the test so really have a, a basic look at your website, send it out to some friends and family and say, hey, you know, is this really simple? What is it that we're trying to get you to do? Is there a strong, clear call to action? Is there too much information? Just keep it really, really simple. This is the website checker. So if you go to thinkwithgoogle.com and you can put in your website, it will then show you on a desktop or a mobile how effective, how quick your website is. Now you and I might go to a website and think, hey, this is really fast, it's not a problem. However, we need to play the game. Going back to my driving test, you know, anyone can drive a car, but doing it to pass your driving test is another matter. So we need to make sure that we're keeping Google happy and it's fast and responsive for Google. Otherwise you'll be paying the price on the cost per click or your website won't, um, won't be very effective in the organic rankings. So, so that's really important. Now, the other thing is that we need to make sure that we are improving and uh, making the optimizations to our to our Google Ads. So we're going into this section here. And now a lot of the time it's about Google um, bids. So it's, it's to do with bidding, it's to do with making changes on how much we're spending on those, uh, those keywords, those ads, time of day, day of week. There's so much there that you can optimize within your Google Ads account, putting in negative keywords. There's, there's a whole ho host of different things. And so I just wanted to show you some examples here of things that you can do within your, your account. So for example, day of week, you can go into your Google Ads account and find out what day of the week your, um, your ads are performing best. So for example here, Monday and Sunday, you can see the cost per conversion, which is the, the second in from the right column, is £94, £92. However, on the other days of the week, it's far higher. So what we therefore want to be saying to Google is, okay, we want to spend our money more to, towards Sunday or Monday rather than these other days. So all we're trying to do is channel our spend to the, um, to the days of the week um, and the aspects of our campaigns that are working better. Same with locations. So in this particular campaign, the, um, you know, Scotland and Wales, this particular um, client was spending for uh, all over the UK. However, Scotland and Wales was costing a lot more. So we need to understand why or turn this off to deviate our spend to the areas of the campaign that are creating the best outcomes. Demographics, that's much the same as well. So what we can do there is we can find out which particular um, ages and, and genders work better and say to Google, right, okay, we want to be spending more on these particular ones rather than the other, um, the other aspects. But really, really important, 
beyond all of this is are you ready you know once we've got this campaign working we've got the the right keywords we've got the right ads we've taken them to the a good landing page we're making the right optimizations if it's working well it's going to be bringing you in these clients so just some thoughts before we dive into this um, google ads campaign is make sure that um, you know, is your follow up process right? Are we answering the phone correctly? Are we gathering the right information? Um, do you have the capacity to be able to look after these um, these uh, prospects that are coming through? Do you in fact have the right selling proposition? Are we offering the right kind of treatments? So these are just more sort of internal questions that would be really useful for you to ask yourselves to make sure that we are um, you know internally correct before we kind of turn on turn on the floodgates so to recap firstly know your numbers do some internal kind of soul searching on that make sure that if you're doing google ads you have conversion tracking set up there's nothing worse than doing google ads without having conversion tracking because you simply won't be able to tell whether it's working or not and trust me i've reviewed so many accounts that don't have conversion tracking and are spending thousands of pounds and um, I scratch my head wondering how they know if it's working or not. So make sure that that is, is set up. Keyword research, um, make sure that we're bidding on the right kind of keywords, we're bringing in the right kind of um, uh, buyer intent people that are, are, are searching Google. Make sure our, I, uh, our, act, sorry, our ads are eye-catching, it's, it's compelling, it's going to bring in the right sort of people to your your website and make sure we're taking them to the relevant page on your website and then lastly learn optimize and repeat you know make the changes within your google ads accounts so that um you know that so that we're making the the best outcomes for your clinic i've oh, i've put in here some handy tools so google ads of course if you want to create a google ads account you go to google uh, sorry ads.google.com uh, there's another quite little snazzy tool that you can use called Keywords Anywhere. It's a Chrome plugin so that you can um, type in a keyword and you can find similar keywords that people are typing in. So that's quite useful for keyword research. Response IQ, that's that popping up uh, resp response mechanism so that people can fill in the details and, um, and encourage an outbound sales call. Google Trends, that's another one whereby you can use this to find um, the, the volume of people that are searching within the last 12 months, five years as well. SpyFu, that's another really useful tool to be able to help for keyword research so that you can find out what your competitors are advertising on. Um, that's a uh, what we call a freemium service. So it's free up to, a, up to a point and you can use that to be able to do some keyword research. Website speed tester, so you can find out how uh, how fast or slow your website is on desktop, on mobile. Um, and I won't explain about Wayback Machine because that, that's not so useful for you guys, but Crazy Egg definitely. Crazy Egg is a heat mapping web uh, uh, platform. And what it will do is if you put this on your website, it will tell you how people are interacting with your site. So Google Analytics is another tool that will tell you where people are clicking and how long they're on the website. However, Crazy Egg will allow you to understand how people are searching with their mouse, how, if they're scrolling up and down the page. It's really useful to be able to give you some data to make changes to your website to enable them to um, make the website really useful for people to search on uh, and get the best from your, your page. So lastly, um, if you would like my slides, uh, I'm more than happy to share them. Just pop me an email to team at yba.co.uk and also very happy to jump on a call for 20 minutes with you if you're doing Google Ads or not to be able to help you independently for your particular clinic to provide you some help and guidance because it can be that you feel like a bit like that cat going, oh my gosh, where do I turn to? What do I do? So um, I'm very happy to spend a bit of time with you guys. Fantastic. Uh, right, I have a question for you then, Laura. Um, can each treatment have its own demographic area? Hi, Sonia. That's uh, <laughs> from Sonia, one of our customers. Yeah, so what you can do is you can have different campaigns for different treatments. That's definitely the way to go. And then what you can do is you can then optimise the campaigns 
uh, demographic so you would do it that way so let's say you've got a campaign on lip fillers you've got a campaign on laser hair removal um, and then in those individual campaigns you can then take bid adjustments and say okay we, we don't want anyone under 18 let's discount that totally um, and uh, and do it that way yes mm, yeah and also this is a question for me actually do you yeah. think that google will go the way that um sort of we're seeing we're seeing instagram go now where at the moment you type something in like you know uh laser hair removal sheffield yeah and you get text mostly text do you mm -hmm. think this will become pictures and videos will we all be yeah i think it will using, it will be using paper clip that way in the future yeah or? I think it will move on. I mean, video is is massive, um, and also images. So you can start to do carousels. That's more for products rather than treatments, but it will definitely be coming for treatments, um, where you can show images. So yeah, it, it's changing all the time, and it's very much text based at the moment. But that is an ever moving feast, and they're always introducing new things. So yeah, I see it going that way definitely. Mm. Okay, I've got another question here. One second. With Facebook ads being so cheap at the moment, would it be better to fund ads on social media rather than Google ads right now? Well, if you've got money to do both, I would do both. Um, the big difference between Facebook, hell, if, you, if you're getting a good cost per lead and it's bringing you the leads through that, in, that change into sales, then you know you wouldn't want to change it. You'd pay that all day. Now, the thing with Facebook is you you don't want to necessarily rely on one particular route for marketing because let's say they um, they cancel your account or, or close down your account, then your whole business is built on something that is is fundamentally flawed. So it's like the Parthenon, you know, the Greek Parthenon. What we need to do is make sure that we've got a number of different pillars that are reliable for the business and uh, and are bringing in sales inquiries. So whilst that's working for you, absolutely go for it, but. I would just be cautious that if you're building just that on your business, then it's it's a little bit of a risky business. The difference yeah. between Facebook ads and Google ads is like we were saying, it's about buyer intent. So what we're doing in Facebook depends on what your strategy is. There's all sorts of very advanced things that you can do there. Um, but we're effectively targeting people who we think are in the in the market for it. You can share content and then you can advertise to those people again once they've engaged with you. So there's various advanced strategies that you can use. The difference between that and the the very absolutely the very low cost per click, although that is getting more competitive, the low cost per click with Facebook compared to Google, the reason the cost per click is high in Google is because they're going to Google to find your treatment. It's up to you to do it right to be able to get those people onto your site engage with them get them to call you so that's the main difference and the reason why google is competitive the average cost per click across the whole board is two pounds fifty so you know you, you want to be doing it properly you don't want to be messing around with this because it can cost you a lot which is why i go back to that very first slide which is people say google ads doesn't work well done incorrectly yes you'll be frustrated and you will waste a lot of money Mm. does it, that answer the question it, yeah well i mean i think i think so but but feel free to add in um people watching yeah. but there's all there's always a cheaper way to get a lead it's it's about the quality of the lead isn't it it's mm. about the the uh the conversion of that turning into a genuine sale yes yep absolutely uh, we've got another question here as a relatively new clinic with limited funds is it worth Google advertising or will we always lose to the big boys? Um, I would say if you are limited on budget, I wouldn't use this as the first thing I would do. Um, if you're a new clinic, I would, I would go out to all my friends and family. I would go do as much kind of cheap or free advertising as you can. Um, if you've got children, you know, go talk to people in the, the school yard to go and, and talk to people there. Um, you know, share it organically. I would do whatever I can free to get myself off the ground, then have a route so that every person that comes through and has a treatment, encourage them to refer to their friends, give them a voucher to spread around, all those sorts of things. But I would say if you're considering Google Ads on a very meagre budget, I would save your money until you've got a little bit more budget. Every every clinic, every area is different, but um, I would say a monthly spend anything less than say 300 pounds a month 
just on the ad spend you know and if you want somebody to manage it obviously there's a fee fee associated with that if you're doing it yourself anything less than say 300 pounds you're probably going to be a bit frustrated with the results so i wouldn't do anything less with that mm -hmm. i would save your money use it wisely uh, and and say right in six months i'm going to give google ads a good go and see if we can make that work but up until that time there are a number of different things that you can do free um less expensive but it is expensive because it will give you good leads but you need to have a pot of cash to to spend on it mm -hmm. yeah i mean we find google ads very successful obviously at linton but we combine it with a range of other different forms of marketing as well so yeah. like you like you say it's a it's how all of the things work together isn't it and it and it's no good just generating lots of people onto your site your site has to be right as well so i think the, the crazy egg thing is quite interesting um to what you know get the heat map and see how people are interacting with your site that's quite sounds like quite a good tool is it free yeah. the crazy egg yeah yep yeah, yep yeah, yeah. there is a free account yes yeah, yeah. Um, there's there's loads of them. If you just put put in free heat mapping software mm. into Google, you'll find all sorts of things. We, we use Crazy Egg, but I think I'm sure that there's a free version. Um, but yeah, definitely. I mean, it, Google Ads is not the silver bullet. There is no silver bullet. Sadly, you know, it's not like you can just flick a switch and you're going to get floods of leads coming through. It's a number of different activities for any business to be able to get sales leads and inquiries in. It's you know, feet on the street time. It's about talking to people. It's about um, sharing sharing testimonials it's about um, sharing top tips you know at the moment content is really really important if you can um, share tips knowledge insights um, top five questions that your ideal prospects ask you all those sorts of things share 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 and don't think you're giving the game away it's not about that it's about building an audience of people that know like and trust you um, and you know i think that's a really important thing to to bear in mind i mean obviously i've been talking about google ads but i'm now broadly talking about marketing as a wider activity um of which i have a huge amount of knowledge on that as well but definitely please just share content and it's almost like serve the universe and the universe will 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 serve you back mm. um it takes time but it is a number of different things that will help to grow your clinic for sure mm. yeah great any other questions from the audience? I was also just going to mention that if anyone is doing Google Ads and is, is wondering whether some of these things that I've talked about is being done in your account or you'd like any further help, I'm more than happy to jump in, have a look at your Google Ads account with you on this 20 minute strategy call. Um, you know, it's, it's about helping you guys. So please lean on me. I'm here to help. Super. Well, thank you ever so much, Laura. That was fantastic absolute pleasure absolute pleasure and uh yeah laura's email uh is on here but equally if anyone misses it then feel free to drop me a line and uh, i can help put you in touch brilliant enjoy thanks, the rest of your day everyone and thank you again laura that was great pleasure thanks see you all soon bye